Hi. Maybe, like me, you're doing some research on an important historical figure. In this case, Herodotus. Or maybe you're doing a scientific literature review where you're looking for some recent information on, let's say, the Hadron Supercollider, and you're looking at magazines such as New Scientist. But have you ever wondered whether the sources you are reading are actually relevant? Or whether the person who's writing it is actually qualified? Or whether the information is actually correct in the first place? In other words, are your sources valid, reliable or accurate? So in essence, I'm going to discuss those three terms, validity, reliability and accuracy as they apply to secondary resources. And I'm going to teach you CRAP, a useful acronym to help you judge by a certain set of criteria whether your sources are indeed valid, reliable and accurate. Now before I go on, although I will be using scientific examples, the information I'm providing will be useful for geography, history, English, in fact any other subject that you're studying. So just keep watching. And I will be using a variety of different science discipline examples, even though this channel is called High School Physics Explained. So let's get started. And the first thing is validity. And in essence, it simply means, is the information you're researching actually relevant to the topic that you're investigating? So let's say you're researching the various factors that affect, let's say, rates of cancer. Now, you're not going to pick up a book that is written for a year one student on health, for example. It's not valid. It's equally, you're not going to necessarily pick up a biology book that is looking at, let's say, bacterial pathogens and how they cause infectious disease because when you're investigating cancer, you're looking at a non-infectious disease. So it's important that the information you're gathering actually answers some of the questions that you have in your investigation. Now let's have a look at reliability. And there are four factors I want to discuss in terms of reliability. They are the author, the date, whether the information is from a reputable source, and bias. So let's start with the author. Now the author needs to actually be provided the name so that it's not anonymous. Secondly, if you're looking at the author, he or she needs to be having some expertise in that topic. So for example, Wikipedia, which is a common source that students gravitate towards, really isn't reliable. Why? Because it's anonymous. You do not know the author. But secondly, the author needs to be also a person who has authority in that area. So, for example, if I were to look at physics concepts, then Richard Feynman would be a great example of an author I would trust. But you need to be careful. Just because an author is a doctor or is a scientist doesn't automatically mean that they have authority. So my theoretical physicist, like Richard Feynman, would not necessarily be the expert I look to if I'm interested in climate change and factors of climate science. So it's important that you have an author and you know that the credentials that they have allows them to speak on, with authority on that topic. The third thing is where the, your source is from a reputable place. Now, if you were looking at books and journals and for all intents and purposes, magazines, those are generally reviewed by editors and so forth. And as a result, you can probably suspect that the information that you're getting is reliable. But that's not necessarily the case if you're looking at websites. And so as a general rule, I'd encourage you to only use .gov or .edu, so your organizational types of websites. So does that mean, for example, .com and .org and so forth are not useful? No, I'm not saying that, but I am saying that you have to be very cautious. A lot of those websites aren't necessarily vetted. They may be written by one author and not reviewed, and so therefore the information may not necessarily be correct. Another thing to consider is the date. It's important that your date is fairly recent. Now, for example, if I'm writing an article and researching on, let's say, something that we know a lot of information above, let's say about uh, friction, for example, then any source in the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years may be quite useful, quite reliable. But if I was looking at information such as a recent drug treatment, then really the research that has only occurred in the last couple of years may be useful. Anything, let's say, beyond five years may not be useful. So it's important that your date is actually quite recent. 
Another good example is the Higgs boson. And for those who study physics will know a little bit about the Higgs boson. Any article written prior to 2012 really discusses the Higgs boson in theoretical sense. But in 2012 was the discovery at the supercollider of the Higgs boson. It was confirmed of its existence. So therefore, if you are doing some research on the structure of matter and you, incur, you involve the Higgs boson, then really you need to look only at articles that are written after 2012 because they take into account the actual discovery of the Higgs boson. And finally, I wanted to discuss bias in terms of reliability. And bias, in essence, skews the information. And ask, you have to ask the question, what is the intent of the author? Now, a really obvious example of bias would be the one that occurred in the 1940s and 1950s when there was a developing understanding of the risk of smoking to the prevalence of lung cancer. And quite a few cigarette manufacturers employed doctors to spruik the idea that smoking wasn't actually the cause of lung cancer. Now, we all know that's not correct. But we know, therefore, those doctors, even though they had authority, they had a bias. They were being paid, and therefore, the information they provide is not accurate. But bias does not necessarily have to be that obvious. A good example would be, let's say, a medical researcher. They're investigating a, di a disease and investigating certain drugs that might cure or relieve the symptoms of that particular disease. And so they're really focused on finding some medication that will do a lot of good. But in the process of looking at that, they may ignore, not willfully, but certainly simply because their focus is on elsewhere, the side effects that may not necessarily be beneficial to the patient. And so as a result, their research will be skewed because they're looking, so to speak, in the more positive direction and not really accounting for any negative impacts that that drug might have. So it's important that as you read, ask yourself the question, is there going to be a bias? You've got to make sure that the researcher is looking at both sides of the arguments. So those are the four factors that affect reliability. Finally, we need to look at accuracy. And accuracy simply means, do you have information from a multiple reliable sources that say generally the same thing? And in essence, what we're saying is there is an agreement along those sources. And so only then can you say that the information you have is accurate. If you only have one source, it doesn't matter how reliable you consider it is, how valid you consider it is, it's not accurate until you have multiple sources that back up the statements in your first article. So there we have it, we have validity, we have reliability, and we have accuracy. And now we come to CRAAP, C-R-A-A-P. So what do they stand for? Well, C stands for currency. And that, as mentioned before, talks about how recent your information is, and I've discussed that. R stands for relevant and simply meaning is the information you're looking for actually going to answer your question. So that ties into the validity part. A stands for authority. So there is your author and their credentials that support and therefore make your information reliable. The second A stands for accuracy. And I've discussed that. Multiple reliable sources that give consistent answers. And finally, purpose. Purpose stands for what is the author intending to do? Are they tending to sway your view on one side or another, or are they giving a balanced view, which ties in with the reliability aspect that I discussed with bias. So there you have it, crap, and helping you understand what validity, reliability, and accuracy are in terms of secondhand investigations. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please like, share, and subscribe. Watch my video on those terms in first-hand investigations if you do sciences. And bye for now.